Hey guys, welcome back. I'm gonna start block sanding down the doors for the 49 Ford. Um, I'm gonna guide coat it with some dry guide coat powder. Now, I bought this years ago. And what I do is when this gets empty, I go to Home Depot or Lowe's and I buy black chalk line chalk and I refill it with that. It's a lot cheaper than having to buy this uh, again. So if you buy this one time, you get the applicator pad you don't need to keep ordering this type of chalk because it's a waste of money. So regular chalk line, black chalk works just fine. I like the dry powder better than the uh, spray can because I think that you get a better coat of guide coat on your panel by rubbing it on like this. It's really, really heavy and it's consistent. When you spray it with a spray can, a lot of times it'll splatter and it doesn't hit all the spots, so it seems kind of pointless to me to use a spray can one. So now that I got that rubbed on there, we're going to start blocking it down with 180 grit. Um, I'm going to use my vacuum system with the, with the hand block. We're not going to use any uh, air tools as of yet. I'm going to block it with 180 grit, and then I'll go over it with the 320 grit on the... On the, um, on the uh, DA sander with a soft foam pad. But here's the 180 grit. It's on this block here. Now this block is an adjustable block. If you turn it one way or the other, you'll make this thing bow in or out and that will help you on panels that are curved. So let's, uh, let me show you how I'm gonna block this down and you'll see what guide coat leaves and what stays. And you'll know what's high and what's low. really hard at all. Kind of just letting the sandpaper do its job. And I go both directions. And I like to sand at an angle. Because if you sand straight back and forth this way, you can create ripples in your panel like this. So by going at an angle, both directions, it avoids that from happening. So let's take a look at it. I'll show you a couple spots that are clearly low. You can see I started to get into this area, so that's still a little low there. So let's keep sanding for a couple minutes and we'll see what it turns out to look like. Now keep in mind, I didn't do any of the body work on this truck or the primering on this truck. So I'm doing, I'm going over somebody else's work. So I don't know how it looked before they primered it. So you can see, maybe on camera, okay. A little dark there still. So that's still a little low. Right here is a little low. That's a little low. So we'll just keep going at it and see what it does.
Okay, that literally is only about a, what, maybe two minutes of work right there so far. And it's looking real good. A um, little low there, a little low here still. Just need to sand it a little bit more. We do have a tiny bit of metal peaking here. Um, and a shiny paint job, I would worry about that. This is a satin paint job. You're never going to see that. Uh, and we got a little tiny bit of metal showing right here at the very, very edge. Once again, not going to worry about it. You're not going to see it. So basically, I'm just going to go ahead, block sand a little bit more, get the rest of this panel smoothed out and flat. And then I got to sand up there, which this probably, let's see what it feels like. Yeah, we got something going on right here, which I'll have to check with the other door and see if it feels the same or not. Because if it doesn't on the other door, we're going to have to fix that because it feels like it's bumping out a little bit. But I'm going to go ahead off camera now and uh, keep blocking this down and I'll be back to show you what it looks like. Okay, the whole bottom half is 180 down. Um, I can feel this metal spot here. I'm going to have to tap this down right here. It's just a little high right there. And then I broke through and through in quite a few places. So I'm probably going to end up having to refill or prime this panel. Normally I could just take my uh, epoxy primer before I paint and spray over it. But I felt the other door at the top and this door has dents up here. Um, right here is screwed up and right down here is screwed up. And I could show it to you by simply uh, running the block on there for a second. And also, by the way, the block sander hooked up to the vacuum system there's no dust, nothing on the floor, just a little bit of residue on the panel itself. But if you take this block right here, and I'm not gonna turn the vacuum on, I'm just gonna show you real quickly here. So this right here has a big hump up. See how I cut through to bare metal like instantly? Plus they didn't put a lot of primer on this at all. And then we got another one right here. So if I go like that, well it's actually Bondo. Actually, I can cut that one out. So that's merely just was too much Bondo right there. Now it feels a million times better. But anyways, we have this high spot right here. This edge has been dinged. So what we want to do is tap this back down carefully. Now this doesn't take a lot of force. You don't have to go whacking on it real, real hard to get it to lay down the ladder. The metal will move. Okay, that feels good. This I'm not overly concerned about. I, I don't feel anything funky going on there. But this spot right here definitely is high. So I'm going to take the pointy end of my hammer. I'm going to lightly tap this down. <laughs> Look at that. The whole panel just went in. It oil canned in. Might have to throw a block underneath it. And so all I'm trying to do is make a low spot. Now it's barely low. Just a little bit low. Now, I could put filler on that, and it's going to flatten right out. Um, we also have some uh, crappy Bondo areas right here. There's just a big gouge of crap going on here. And this is why I don't usually like going over people's body work, because it's, if it's going to come to me like this, I might as well just do it myself, because i got to go back over it anyways. But anyways... Um, I'm going to get some bond, some filler mixed up here. We're going to hit these couple spots. So let me get this wiped off and I'll be right back. Okay, since none of it is really big and huge, we're going to use this uh, fantastic glaze by Upol, UP0922. And we're going to mix up a little bit of this. And when you mix this stuff, you want to make sure that you don't... Uh, Stir it. 
and then you might have to massage the tube on this hardener because sometimes you'll get liquid in it and you need to massage it around to get all the liquid to be mixed back up into the hardener. So we're just gonna take this and kind of keep folding it over and that's how we mix this stuff. Don't stir it in a circle. That creates air bubbles, which creates pinholes in your body filler. Let's go over here, we're gonna hit some of these spots. Now, I'm not gonna do a video on me filler priming these. I mean, I've filler primed enough stuff. I mean, I think you guys kind of get the idea on that. First thing I wanna do is clean up around this hinge because it looks like crap. Let's get a nice clean line here. And we got some pinholes. Now, in pinholes, what I do is I wipe one direction. Let me find some here. I go this way, and then I pull it the opposite way. If you pull it the same way twice, you end up wiping it out sometimes. I'm not saying you wipe it all out, but you do wipe some of it out. So I'm just going around checking for pinholes. And we have this dent right here that I made. I created that dent because it was a high spot. I'm using a small spreader because I don't have real big areas to work with. I have a medium sized one. I guess I probably should use that. We'll make it work with this. Okay. You know, that still feels like hair hiding. I'm gonna tap that down before my filler dries. Right here still has a little bit of a high spot. Right here. Now this I'm using can go direct to metal. You don't have to have epoxy primer down for this filler. A lot of the body fillers now, I'm noticing, can be used directly over bare metal. They didn't want you to do that in the past, but I think they've changed the way things are made now to let you go over more. More of these products will go over bare metal than they used to. So I'm going to let that dry, and then I'll be back. Okay, these areas are dry. Now, before I block sand down these areas, I'm going to hit it really quickly with the DA sander. It's all I'm going to do is knock it down just about level. We're not going to take all the product off of the DA sander. We just want to knock it down to the point where I can hit it with the block sander a couple times and it'll be nice and flat.
my block sander out and we're gonna finish it up. I mean, it feels really good now. Tiny, tiny little ripple, which three coats of 2K primer would probably knock that out of there. But let's hit it a couple times to make it even flatter. So if you know how to use your DA properly, you can get a, flat, a panel pretty darn flat with a DA, but you gotta make sure that you keep it flat on your panel. Don't start digging it every which way because that's just gonna make divots in your, in your primer. So now we're just gonna hit it with this. And you can see we're bringing out the, the body filler around it now. And that feels really good now. And we'll know when I reprimer this and we block it down again, we'll know if that's fixed or not. Okay, since I'm no longer preparing this for paint, I'm not going to sand any higher than 180 grit. We're gonna stop at 180 grit so that we can re-2K primer it down. Okay. So I'm gonna touch up a couple of little areas. I gotta DA sand this because there's a bunch of nicks in the hinge right here. Show it to you in the primer. I don't know if they were hitting it with a hammer or what, but this is all screwed up here. So I need to feather all that out so that we can feather prime it. Um, so let me finish up just knocking down some areas in here and stuff. And then I'm going to put this one off the side. We'll grab the other door real quick. We'll guide coat it and see if that, what that door looks like. Okay. Let's spread some guide coat on this one and we will see what this one looks like. I mean, I could feel the panel down with my hand. And I feel something weird, a little bit weird right there. But this is the, the true tail sign. So I think if they would have put more filler primer on it, I think I probably could have got a lot of those imperfections out, except for the ones that were up top, because those were just too far off. But they barely put enough... 2k primer on it you got to put three four coats of 2k primer on it if you don't do that you're kind of just wasting your time because you're going to sand through it so fast and hit all your body work and everything else and you're not even going to know if it's straight so you got to put it on heavy because you're going to sand most of it off anyway so it's not like it really matters i mean i'll bet you if you put four coats of 2k primer on these doors by the time I got done block sanding them properly, there's going to be a coat left on it probably. But anyways, we'll put three coats on. We're not going to go put four or five coats on because we don't need it at this point. But it would have been nice if there was more on there. Okay, so now I'm going to get my hand block hooked back up to the vacuum. Okay. Let's start hitting it, see what it looks like. Once again, I'm not pushing very hard at all. Light pressure. So you can clearly see I felt this, I felt that.
a low spot right here. Right there. I can feel it. There's definitely a more primer on this door than the other one, but it's still not a ton. this down, put some filler here and over here. And we're going to get those two areas body worked. Everything else doesn't feel too bad. There's some pinholes I need to fill in as well. But, you know, if I were primering this, when the primer was wet, I would see this. Okay. And I would see that. And that's only because I've been doing it for a long time. The average person is not going to see that. Okay. So I don't expect the average person to see it, but feeling it, is what's going to determine you you want if you could feel it you're going to see it in a paint job uh so if you feel something funky fix it because you're going to see it um and this this like right here will just look like a dent so let me get these filled in and then we'll come back and sand those down let me show you real quick i switched to a six inch blade so i have a much wider blade on here and the reason being is I want to span over that dent and have my blade hit on each side of that dent so that it'll fill it in. I need to clean my board. So basically I'm dragging in the center very lightly, okay? Then I'm coming back and I'm tilting my blade like this and just scraping down the outer edges. What that does is makes it feathered out for me, makes my sanding a little bit quicker so I don't have to uh, spend as much time sanding on it. So now I'm going around once again and finding pinholes, filling those in. I kind of like these metal spreaders. I think they, uh, lay down the material better than the plastic ones. It pulls the material tighter and smoother in my opinion.
getting around this hinge because it looks like crap like the other side did. And that's another thing too, is your car, if you're doing it yourself, you don't have to do a 100% perfect job. But if you do all the areas really well, but there might be a little imperfection here and there, you are more, you're less likely to see it because everything around it looks good. You know what I mean? Everything looks, for the most part, really good. So it draws your eye away from it. If you do a half-assed job and you leave stuff like around this hinge and stuff, when you look at a car, you're gonna look right at that. And then that's gonna catch your eye. Once people start seeing that, then they start finding other flaws. So if you do everything to, to the best of your ability and try to just not skip on little things like that and just paint it, if you don't do that, you'll have a much better end result by just spending a couple minutes and primering these doors one more time. As you can tell, I mean, you can see how fast this sands down. It's not like I'm spending hours of my day fixing this. It's literally gonna be an hour of my day to sand down and fix two doors and reprime them. So, all right, I'm gonna get this cleaned up and then we'll sand those areas down. Okay, it's set up, let's take a feel. Feels a lot better. Let's hit it with the DA sander real quick. plug the hose in. This does have a dual port for the hoses, but I'm only using one side right now. As you can see, I'm keeping my sander flat. top surface.
Yeah, that feels really good. Right here is a little high on the filler. That feels better. So now I'm going to go around and just knock down the other area and then I'll be back found one more dent right here. It was a pretty good one. So that's drying. I'm going to sand that down. The other door is all blown off in the spray booth. We get this one spot sanded down, get this in the spray booth. And I'm just going to go ahead and video me uh, primering it because if somebody is new to this project, I'll show them what I'm using for primer. Um, there are a few bare metal spots showing, not very many. I'm not going to worry about epoxy primer. We're going to go right to a 2K primer. Um, if it was a lot of metal showing, I would uh, put an epoxy primer down first and then the 2K over top. But seeing as that's only a couple little spots, I'm not gonna worry about it. So let me get this sanded down and I got a new uh, gallon of primer mixing up in the mixer right now. Okay, primer still mixing. It's got another five minutes or so. I put it on for 15 minutes because it's a new can. So I wanna make sure that it's stirred up really well because new cans sit and they all the hard or all the thick primer falls to the bottom and the liquid comes to the top. So you got to really stir it up. Now, normally I use wax and grease remover to wipe down my panels before I reprimer. But I'm going to show you guys that you can use Sprayway window cleaner from Home Depot or Lowe's to wipe your panels down and get just as good as results as you can with a wax and grease remover. Um, so let's go out there, spray some of this on there. And we're going to wipe it down. I don't know why my camera was messing up there, but okay, let's uh, take a couple of these towels out there. Now we're not wiping this down like we're gonna paint it. Yes, you could still use the window cleaner before you paint. We're just trying to get any of the loose uh, dust off of the panel. So basically just lightly mist it on here. Just give it a good wipe down, that's all you gotta do. the gray primer on the rag. And then just make sure it's completely dry before you start putting on your primer, which we have plenty of time because it's still mixing. And it's always good to wipe down your panels before you primer layer of dust off because if you don't get that little layer of dust off your panel your primer in a sense is sticking to that layer of dust yeah it's probably still going to stick to your panel but you really want to risk it if it doesn't stick to your panel over a minute of wiping something down so your best bet is to just wipe it down to make sure you don't need to have a headache in six months to a year because you didn't want to you were being lazy and didn't want to wipe it down and you get delaminating where your uh, primer starts delaminating. I do have the heater on. I'm warming it up in here because the parts feel pretty cold. They're probably, if I were to guess, these parts are probably at 60 degrees. Let me go grab my gun and we'll see what it says the temperature's at. That's 75. That's not too bad. Feels a little cold to the touch. I like to have my panels at least 80 degrees. So I'm gonna let the heater run for a couple more minutes while the rest of that primer is mixing up. Plus we have to mix up the primer. And right now it's almost 70 degrees in here. So I'll bet you this panel's even hotter 
because this panel is closer to the heater. Eighty point nine, so five degree difference by simply being three feet apart from the heater. So we'll let them sit for a little bit longer, a couple minutes. Getting ready to mix up this primer. This is a four to one mix on the primer. Four parts primer, one part hardener, and then a little reducer. It's actually four to one to, I use four to one to 20% reducer. This is a Summit Racing 2K primer. I really like this stuff. I've had no shrink back issues with it. It goes on really well. It's thick as long as you put on enough coats. Plus there already is Summit 2K primer on there because that's what they use. So we're just staying with the same product putting it on thicker than what they did. So this just got done. Put our sleeve in our cup here. We're gonna use a medium hardener just to get this to dry quicker. You can use a slow, a medium, or a fast. Um, I usually only buy slow and medium. When I paint, I use slow. When I, um, as I grabbed the wrong one. When I um, primer, I use a medium. I gotta get some reducer. I have a bunch of my products out on a job on painting a bar, which I'm gonna have a video on Saturday. I'm going to be painting it on Saturday. I'm gonna stop there tomorrow and sand down the bar, touch up any more bodywork areas they need to touch up. And then Saturday morning, I'm going there at 5.30 to six in the morning and I'm gonna paint that before the restaurant opens. The restaurant opens at 11, 10 or 11. So I gotta get there early, use those air movers, those air scrubbers and get that thing painted. So I'm gonna go there tomorrow and get it all sanded and prepped so that Saturday morning when I get there, I maybe only have a couple minutes of maybe a little bit of sanding and then um, wiping it down and then getting it painted. I am gonna do a video on me painting it. Now, I don't have my respirator with me and I don't wanna open up a new one. So I'm going to spray this without a respirator today. I'm just gonna put on a paper mask there's not a lot of overspray in the booth from this stuff, so a paper mask will be just fine for today. I didn't think I was going to be primering tonight. I thought I was going to be sanding down and getting them prepped for tomorrow night, and I was going to paint the inside of the doors tomorrow night, but as you can see, I am now fixing bodywork areas. So got to add reducer, but you can see how thick this stuff is. It's really, really thick, so it's, you got to really mix it up, and that's why I use 20% reducer because I found when I use less reducer, it it goes on really thick and kind of orange peely, and I don't want it to be like that. I want it to be thinner and smoother, so it's quicker for me to block sand down. But when you add reducer, you're thinning the product, which means your build layer is thinner. So. If I thin this down to 20, 25% reducer, my three coats might only be equivalent to two coats. So you gotta keep that in mind too because you're thinning your product, which means it's going on thinner. So, all right, I'm gonna get this mixed up and we are gonna go out there and get some primer on. One more thing, if you're using these disposable cup, cups and lids, on a 2K primer, you have to take this, this uh, filter out of here. If you don't take the filter out, it clogs up almost instantly. So let's get out there and get this primer.
I gotta go clean the tip out real quick. Okay, this first door is ready again. really quick because I have the heater turned up in here. It's 90 degrees in here right now. Now, I'm going to do the third coat. I'm not going to hit the top up there. I'm just going to do the bottom of the doors.
little bit more, so we're going to end up doing a fourth coat. Okay, since I mixed up more, I just mixed up enough to hit the whole entire door one more time. So I'm going to do the top and bottom one more time. Once the shininess goes away, then I'll put some heat on it. I just want to make sure that all the um, uh, chemicals come out of the surface. And they usually start coming out when it starts dulling up like that. So uh, that's going to end this video. The doors are ready for another guide coat and block sanding. They should be really good. There's four heavy coats of primer on there now. Um, and we fixed those low spots with the filler. So we'll block them down. I don't know if I'll get to it tomorrow night. If not, I'll do it on Saturday. We'll block it down and then we will flip it over and we'll get the back sides all sanded down too. And there's a couple dings on the one door on the inside, which I'm going to use a 1K spray can primer before I paint. Let me show it to you. Um, what we'll do is we'll do a, we'll do a, a dealership uh, parking lot repair on those inside couple little dings. We'll hit them with some body filler and then we'll spray some of this uh, Spray Max 1K primer over the body filler. This stuff takes about an hour to set up and then you can lightly sand it down and then we'll get it into epoxy primer and we'll paint the inside of the door satin black um, on Saturday. I think I'll do it all Saturday. Let this dry tomorrow. Plus I'm gonna be working on that bar tomorrow. So we're just gonna let this dry. Saturday when I get home from painting the bar, We'll come out here, we'll get these blocks sanded down, we'll get them all sanded down, we'll get them taped off, and we'll get the back sides painted satin black. And then um, Sunday, we can tape off the satin black areas and paint the doors the gray, gunmetal gray. And we'll probably do the running boards at the same time. The front nose piece we're gonna do separate because it's so big and kind of flimsy. And there's a bunch of spots on there that need body work. There's even a crack in it. So I think what I'm gonna do with the crack, maybe on Saturday, when I'm getting all these prepped. The crack on the front nose, 
think we'll take my uh, deburring tool and route it out a little bit and then uh, fill it with some uh, uh, panel bonding adhesive and just fill it in with some panel bonding adhesive. It's right in the corner, right in the very back. Um, I think that should hold it and secure it pretty well. Um, and then I could start doing the body work on that probably probably Monday of next week. I don't think I'm gonna mess with it on Sunday. I think Sunday I'll just concentrate on painting the, the uh, doors and running boards. So, all right guys, that's gonna end this video. Um, I'm gonna be, like I said, there's gonna be a short video coming out tomorrow, probably after I sand the bar down, just to show you guys what it looks like. It's kind of hard to film because there's a bunch of other people working in there and people don't really wanna be filmed. So I try not to do that when people are in there. Um, Saturday morning, I'll be all alone, especially cause I'm gonna be painting. Nobody can be in the area. So I will film me painting the bar. We're using a single stage to bluish green color, single stage urethane automotive paint. Um, I don't want to waste time putting a clear coat on it. We're not wet sanding and buffing it. They just want a nice shiny bluish green paint on the bar. So that's what we're going to give them. So, all right, guys, thanks for watching. I appreciate it. Any questions or comments, feel free to ask. Um, if you wouldn't mind hitting the thumbs up button, uh, like, sh share, whatever you can do, if that'd be awesome. I'd really appreciate it tons of videos coming all year long i mean i've got videos for probably the next two years i can make worth of vehicles that are coming in and vehicles i currently have here so hopefully you guys stick around and we'll keep making more thanks guys